Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Manos, and we're, go we're going to talk about OLAS and how you can build and monetize your decentralized AI agent in Python uh, by participating in a hackathon that we're organizing. Uh, so first, we're going to discuss about what OLAS is. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the prediction agent hackathon uh, and what it is. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can run and refine your own prediction agent in order to participate. Uh, so I'm, let me, yeah. I'm Adamadios Zaras. Um, I work as a Python engineer at Valerie. I have a data science background. And Valerie is the company that is behind OLAS. Uh, so what is OLAS? OLAS uh, is a notion of decentralized services for crypto. Uh, and what kind of services? Uh, these services range from oracles to AI, messaging, and more. Um, so OLAS uh, has a protocol which uh, coordinates a community of developers to build those services. Um, it uses the OLAS token. Um, and. Uh, it uses the OLAS token, uh, and let's see what uh, OLAS uh, is composed of. Uh, so OLAS is a protocol, uh, and uh, this protocol, uh, in, on this protocol, you can um, register your code. Uh, it also coordinates the actors, and you can get rewarded uh, from, from it. Um, it also has an open source framework. Uh, it is the Open Autonomy Framework. And using this framework, you can uh, build those services that we mentioned, and you can also register code to the protocol. And it is, it is also an ecosystem of running services and code. And those services provide value to the end users. Uh, so here, we're using the term autonomous services. Um, and this is the special type of services that runs on OLAS. And we're going to discuss about this uh, now. So what is an autonomous service? An autonomous service has uh, broad applicability in running uh, everything from uh, relayers, messaging, uh, AI tools, uh, and more. Um, these uh, can be applied in fields such as uh, DeFi, uh, NFTs, uh, decentralized social, uh, etc. Um, autonomous services uh, offer a unique set of tools uh, to developers uh, because they're crypto native, they're flexible, and they're intelligent. Uh, they're crypto native, uh, unlike web services or other centralized solutions, um, they're flexible. Uh, unlike uh, current uh, contract and oracles automations, and they're intelligent and capable uh, of running powerful and long-running computations. Uh, an autonomous service has a robust architecture, uh, and you can see on a high level the architecture on the picture on the right. Uh, so the service is in the middle, and you can see the service consists of multiple agents, um, each agent is operated by a different entity, and those services can perform uh, ex uh, computations, as we mentioned, such as uh, they can run AI models, and they use Tendermint in order to come into consensus about their actions. Uh, the service is rep represented by an NFT uh, to the protocol, and the agents of the service can pull data from uh, any source, it can be Web 2 or Web 3 sources, it could be IPFS, a ceramic stream, anything. And they can also submit transactions on chain, um, and they do that by using a safe multisig uh, on which uh, each of these agents uh, is a signer. Uh, the OLAS Ocean of Services is already in full swing. Um, there are already more than 100 services uh, registered on the protocol. Uh, they have performed more than uh, 60,000 transactions. Um, OLAS has uh, collaborated with some of the uh, most reputable names in the space. 
And there are already some services in all of those categories that you can see. So, um, Valerie, the company behind Olas, uh, recently uh, collaborated uh, with Gnosis Chain and Kleros, um, and they participated in order to build a project uh, that utilizes the, the stack, the Olas stack. Um, this project, uh, I'm going to give you an introduction uh, yeah. about this project um, and why you might want to participate and how you can get easily started. Uh, the project is called the Prediction Agents Hackathon. Um, we have developed uh, an autonomous AI agent uh, that participates in prediction markets. And uh, why would we do that? Um, prediction markets are one of the oldest uh, applications uh, on the crypto space. Um, however, they require expensive human reasoning. Um, staying on top of and making accurate predictions is a costly skill. Um, and uh, sorry, give me one moment. So staying on top of and making accurate predictions is a costly skill. And as a result, uh, prediction markets. Uh, Adaptation, adoption has uh, suffered. Um, so, um, right. Um, however, um, with low cost chains like Gnosis. Uh, with protocols like OLAS and with uh, recent advances in uh, AI models, um, we recognize that there might be a new opportunity. Uh, therefore, we set out to uh, test whether we could transform the economics of prediction markets by using uh, decentralized uh, AI agents in order to participate in the prediction markets uh, instead of uh, humans. And therefore, uh, the Prediction Agents Hackathon uh, was created. Um, you can also get involved in the hackathon. Uh, you just need to clone a repository, uh, run a simple command, and, the, and you're away. Um, you can also uh, make changes to your agent strategy in order to uh, uh, outcompete other agents that are participating in markets, and you can also uh, submit changes to the code base and get uh, rewards. Uh, so, the rewards uh, are the following uh, Gnosis Chain uh, is rewarding uh, the best AI mech tool, and we're going to discuss uh, what an AI mech tool uh, is uh, next. Uh, Valerie uh, is rewarding the best prediction agent adaptation, and uh, this means uh, the best uh, code change uh, to the agent. And Kleros is rewarding uh, the best performing agent, so basically the one with, uh, that, that produces uh, uh, the most uh, value for itself. Um, now we're going to discuss uh, about how you can run an agent first. Uh, but first, uh, allow me to uh, introduce you to the AI mech concept. Um, so, a mech is an autom autonomous service that we have built. Um, a mech receives requests on-chain. Uh, it performs some uh, operation, like uh, an AI, uh, running an AI model, for example, and it posts uh, it posts the, the response on chain as well. Um, the Mech service has uh, a large set of tools that uh, someone can call by making this transaction request on chain. Um, the prediction agent that we're going to discuss about uh, is using uh, the AI, a specific tool of uh, the AI, AI Mechs in order to uh, run. So let's discuss about the steps that the prediction agent 
uh, does uh, on a high level. The prediction agent uh, first needs to pull uh, all the data for the prediction markets from the Omen platform. Uh, next, it needs to sample uh, one of those markets. Uh, currently, it uses uh, it samples the, the market with the highest liquidity. Uh, this can uh, obviously be improved. Um, next, after it, ha it has sampled uh, one of those markets, uh, it needs to decide whether it, whether uh, what it should vote for and whether it's profitable to vote. Um, so it does this by co calling the MEC tool that we discussed about. Uh, so it sends a prompt that contains the question of the market and the potential choices to the MEC tool. And the MEC tool responds. Uh, the prediction agent uh, reads the events on chain and picks up uh, the result. Uh, next, uh, the prediction agent needs to calculate whether uh, voting for what the, the MEC proposed is profitable. Um, so after taking that step, uh, if it is profitable, then it, it simply votes. If it's not pro profitable, then it blacklists this uh, prediction market for a configurable amount of time, currently for one hour. Um, and finally, uh, after doing those steps, it checks uh, if it can redeem some of the positions uh, to get back some uh, rewards. Now, uh, let's go to the trader quick start that we have linked in the presentation. As you can see, we have set up this repo. Uh, it has all the instructions that you need in order to run your first agent. Um, we simply need to clone the repository. And we also need to make sure that this, the system uh, meets those requirements. So we need Python 3.10, uh, Poetry, uh, a version that's uh, larger or equal to 1.4.0. We need Docker and Docker Compose. So let's, I'll do that on my desktop. All right. So let's clone the repository. Is there a different uh, SSID than, than the one? I think. Yeah. Can someone read the password? <laughs> OX. All right, thanks. Let me try again. So, is it supposed to be that way, or? Uh, sorry? Do you want to use my one? Uh, sure, if, you, if, if, if you're, yeah. Uh, which 
fun. Pizza. All right. <laughs> That was fast. <laughs> All right. Now uh, we're into the repository. Uh, as you can see, the only thing that you need to do is make the script executable and then simply run the, the script. And let's do that. So the first thing we notice is that the script requires an RPC in order to run. Um, so what we suggest is that uh, you, you get it from getblock. Uh, and this is, the reason is because getblock supports ethnew filter. And we haven't spotted yet uh, an RPC that supports it, another RPC that supports it. Um, I have created uh, a demo project here for uh, for now, and we're going to copy this RPC. I'm going to input the RPC uh, into the script. Uh, the input is he hidden, and I'm going to press enter. Now the script is going to uh, basically go through all the steps that are required. Um, it's going to clone uh, the trader repository, and it's going to automatically generate uh, some addresses. Uh, these are uh, the address of the service owner uh, that is going to own the service on the protocol uh, that, that we are going to mint soon. Uh, the script will do this for us. And it also generates uh, an address for our agent. Uh, so the script now is waiting for us to fund uh, with five cents, uh, the auto-generated address of the operator in order to be able to mint uh, the service to the protocol. Let's send that amount. Let's wait for the transaction to be validated. All right, it's already picked it up. Uh, it has seen the balance, so it started minting uh, our service. So, it's first going to go through the activation step for our service. Then it's going to register the agent instance that it created to that service. After registering the agent instance, it's going to deploy the service, which is the final step. All right, so our service is on the protocol. Uh, now uh, we need to fund our agent, which is going to pay the fees for the transaction. And we also need to fund our safe. The safe is going to uh, basically spend uh, the amounts for the bets. Let's first uh, fund our agent instance. I'm going to send 0. Point, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to send 0. 0.5 x die. <coughs> Let's speed this up. All right. I 
And last, I'm going to send some funds to the safe. I'm going to send about one X die or 1.5. All right, so now we're waiting for the script to pick this up, to pick the, the balance. It's been confirmed. Let's wait for the script. All right, great. So now it will set up our service. Uh, it's going to use Docker for that and Docker Compose. As you can see, it's already started creating the containers. It's first creating uh, the container for the agent and next it's going to create the container for the tendermint node of that agent. All right, so the service is running. It's running in the background. Um, as you can see on the quick start in the instructions, uh, there are some commands to get you uh, started. Uh, for example, you can investigate the logs of the trader. Um, so this might be overwhelming if you're just getting started, but I'd like to show you how, how, how this looks. And I'm going to remove some uh, unuseful uh, information and we can focus on the rest. All right, so let's go to the top. Uh, these are some uh, framework related uh, things, so we're going to focus on the rest. Um, as you can see, this is called the update batch round. This is where it fetches all the information that we mentioned. And you can see here all the market's information. Next, it's the sampling that I mentioned. It, it, just, picked up, it just picked one uh, market. Um, next, we can see uh, the request to the Mac. So there's a link here. If we click, you can see on IPFS the prompt that we sent uh, to the tool. You can see the tool that we requested to use. And there's also some unique ID for our request. And next, um, we can see here that we're sending basically the request to the Mac. We're sending the transaction. And now, at this point, our service was waiting for the Mac to respond. So it basically filters the events. And as we can see, it picked up the response to our request. Here, we can see the response from the, from the machine learning tool from the LLM. Um, we can see uh, the probability for the yes for the market. We can see the probability for the no answer for the market. And we can see the confidence uh, of the model. Um, we can also see what is called info utility. So this is the percentage on information of information that it used uh, online in order to make the prediction. So what the tool does is it enhances our prompt with information that it picks from the internet. Currently, it uses the Google API to fetch some news and uh, add those to the prompt. And yeah, 0 0.6 is the percentage of uh, information it used online, and the rest is just the uh, knowledge of the uh, model. Um, so here, we can see what. Uh, what the prediction agent did. So it says that it first of all mentions what is the liquidity of the market. Then it says what's our potential profit uh, from placing this bet. And it says uh, that the profitability, the decision for the profitability is true. So we're placing the bet next. Uh, let me fast forward to that. This is the transaction. You can see this is our hash, and let's oh, let's take a look. 
at the transaction on Gnosis scan. Let me check if he. Nope. All right. Let this. Now let's see that transaction. If you go to the logs, you can see, first of all, the amount that we sent, the amount that we have placed, uh, the amount of the bet. Um, this is the market on which we have placed the bet. And if you go to the creation of the market, to the uh, transaction of the creation of the market, you can see what actually, which market was the one that we placed the bet. And this is the question that you can see right there. Um, all right, so this was uh, a high-level uh, overview of, of the logs, but there's obviously an easier way to do that. Uh, you can do that only if you want to be on top of uh, and uh, basically verify for yourself what, what's going on. But we have created some uh, scripts to easily do that. Uh, let me first, here you can see the command for stopping your service. So let me first do that because it's running in the background. So let's stop the service. While it's stopping, I am going to show you those commands that I mentioned. Uh, so first of all, there's the trades.py script. Uh, let's copy that. Let's paste that on the terminal. And let's replace with our safe address. All right, let's paste that here. Oh, I'm already in the repo. All right, so as you can see from the output, uh, the script simplifies things a lot. Uh, it outputs a link to the market that we placed the bet, so you can see what it was on their UI, on the Omens UI. Uh, it has the question of the market. Uh, it has the amount that we bet for and how many conditional tokens uh, were bought. And we can see the fee that we paid uh, to the market. And here it says market not finalized. This means that uh, it's still running. And uh, if it's finalized, uh, then the, the, the trader agent is going to redeem the amount if, if, it's, if, if your position is winning. Uh, to the bottom, we can see a, a summar summary. Um, we can see how many trades we have, we have performed. Uh, we can see the amount that we have invested the fees that we've paid, the earnings so far, it's zero because no markets uh, have been finalized, and what amount we have redeemed. Uh, the next thing I would like to show you is how you can keep track of uh, the MEC requests and responses. Uh, so if you go to the aimex.autonolas.network, there's a tab called MEC, and here you can see all of the request IDs, all of the senders, so you can basically find your safe address in the senders, and you can see the request data and the delivers for that request. So if we see the first one, for example, you can see the prompt, the tool, and the unique ID, and you can see the response for that. It's that easy, you don't need to go through the logs. And last, uh, if you would like to take a look at what your service is doing, you could check the state transitions, as it is called. So you can run this command, and this will print all the transitions on which your service has uh, entered. Uh, so you can see that it has completed two periods, as, as, we, as we say that, it's uh, how many times it's repeated the same uh, procedure. Um, and you can see that uh, it has placed a bet during the pe first period. Uh, it has 
not redeemed anything yet, and the same for period one, for period two, etc., etc. You can monitor your service easily with that command. Now back to the slides. Uh, so something else that you can do is uh, you can improve uh, your agent strategy. Um, one uh, easy way to do that uh, would be by editing uh, some environment variables. So let's go to the trader repository. So if you take a look at the folder called packages and then the Valerie, the Valerie package, uh, you will see that there's a folder called services with the trader service inside. And there's a YAML configuration file. Inside this YAML, you can see a ton of configurations, but we can focus on the trader specific ones. So an important one is uh, the MEC tool. Um, here you can see uh, which tool is being used by default. You can also see the, see the beta mount. Uh, so the beta mount depends on the confidence. So intuitively, if you take a look, uh, if the confidence is up to 0 0.5, uh, we don't place a bet, but you can play around with these values. Um, so above 0 0.6, uh, we increase uh, the values that we bet for. Uh, you can also see the bet threshold. This is uh, the amount uh, below which the service is not going to bet because it doesn't consider it to be profitable enough. And another important one is the prompt template. Um, here is the uh, prompt that we send uh, to the to the Mac tool, and as you can see, it has some parameters. This is uh, the question of the market, uh, what represents yes and what no, because even though the markets are binary, it could not it could be uh, something di different than yes and no. It could be blue or green. The answer. Um, so it also needs those parameters, and these are these are populated uh, by the service. Uh, so let's take a look at an example. So I'm going to show you uh, what I've done in my uh, trader. Uh, so if we open uh, the script that I mentioned before in the quick start, uh, you can see if you go to the bottom, you can see that there are some of these environment variables hard-coded in there with some default values. So I have changed the prompt template here. So, sorry, so I, can you yeah. zoom in a little bit? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks a lot. Is that fine? Perfect. All right. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, here I have edited the prompt template on my service. Uh, so I've changed the, the prompt a bit in, as an unbiased QA expert, please provide the probabilities of pet, pet yes and pet no occurring for the question. Here is the parameter. If the yes option is represented by yes and the no option by parameter no. So you only need to change the environment variable in the script. And then you can simply, let's go to my agent. And you can simply run the, the, the script again. The script has already stored the necessary information like the RPC, uh, your agent address, your safe address. You don't need to provide anything again. It does the, the balance check here. So as you can see, my agent does not, my safe does not have enough balance. So let's send some uh, die there. I'm going to send about one X die when MetaMask detects 
the address. All right. Let me do that 0 0.8. Let's make that aggressive. All right. And now when the service picks this up, it's just going to uh, spin up the service again, and the environment variable will have uh, uh, changed the prompt that our prediction agent is using. So you might see this message. Uh, so this is in order to remove the previous build. Uh, it's safe. It's only going to delete these folders that are mentioned here, some Docker-related uh, information. And it's going to regenerate those. And as you can see, it's already starting again. <clears throat> now it's running again. Let's take a look at these logs. Starting, it's picked up the markets, it sampled the market. Let's wait for the request to the MEG. It's already been sent. Here it is. Let's take a look at this request. Let's go to Gnosis Scan, paste that has. Let's see the logs. Let's see the data. Let's go to IPFS. Paste those data. And now we can see the prompt. As you can see, it has changed. It's not the prompt that we used previously. So uh, it's relatively simple to tweak your, uh, your strategy by editing those environment variables. Um, However, um, tweaking those environment variables might not uh, get you too far. Um, so in order to improve your strategy, you might want to improve your expected uh, net profit. So the expected net profit is defined uh, in the following, following way to the service. So it is uh, the number of tokens that we have obtained the number of tokens uh, is a function of the bet amount that we have placed and the market on which uh, we have placed the bet. The bet amount depends on the confidence. So as you can see, the confidence plays a big role. So by tweaking uh, something that would change the confidence, we could uh, end up with a much better expected net profit. After calculating the number of tokens, we subtract the amount that we used for the bet. We subtract the fees, such as uh, the, the value that we paid to the MEC for, for the response, and such as uh, the fees that we, we uh, paid to the prediction market. And finally, we subtract this threshold that I mentioned before, which was in the configuration. And it's there because the user might not want to place a bet if it's below a specific amount. So in order to have a better strategy, you could refine the code in order to improve the confidence and the results from the tool. So. I'm going to demonstrate how this can be done. As you can see, this is uh, the repository for the MEG service that I mentioned before. Um, inside the MEG service, there's a folder called Tools. In this folder are all the implementations of the tools. And here you can see there's one script it's called the prediction request. And this is what uh, we are currently using in the prediction agent. So let's take a look at this script. Uh, you only need to know how to code in Python. And this uh, abstracts away uh, everything, all the knowledge you need to have uh, 
for the framework. Um, let's take a look here. Uh, we can see the, the names of the tools that you can, you can use uh, from this specific script. Um, as you can uh, if you remember, this was in the request uh, that we sent to the Mac. We can see the prompt that it uses. So as you can see, it enhance enhances the prompt a lot. It, it adds uh, a lot of things. And here is where the user's prompt uh, is entered. And here are the additional information, which is uh, the data that we fetch from the Google News API that I mentioned before. And if you go to the bottom, you can see the main Meth the main function, it's called run, and all the tools need to implement the run method. Um, let's take a look. Uh, it's relatively simple. So what it does is, um, it first of all, uh, it, it picks some values like hyperparameters, etc., like the temperature of the model. Uh, it sets the, the, the open AI key and some things. Uh, and then what it does is, it first fetches uh, the additional information from the API we mentioned, and then it adds this in the prompt. Uh, here's the user's prompt, as you can see. And here is the, by the way, can you see that or should I zoom in a bit? Yeah, it would be good to see that. All right. Is that OK? A little bit less. Less, all right. Is that OK? <laughs> All right. Um, so it creates the prediction prompt by using the user's prompt and the additional information. And then uh, it simply creates, uh, sends a request to the OpenAI uh, API and gets the response. Uh, so one thing you could do to improve your strategy would be to create a new tool. And let's take a look at one of the tools that was submitted recently. Uh, so on a high level, what uh, they did in this PR is they uh, introduced a concept that is called subject matter expert. And what they do is they basically enhance the prompt that they sent to ChatGPT by using uh, specific uh, specialized prompts depending on the subject. And how they do that is they first send a request to the OpenAI in order to understand what the subject is. And then they enhance the prompt by using uh, this information and send the final prompt that has been edited to OpenAI and get the response. Let's take a quick look at this uh, implementation. So here, as you can see, they just uh, get uh, this uh, configuration of the prompt. But let's go to the uh, main part of the implementation. Here is where they generate the subject matter expert prompt. And as you can see, it gives some examples for task questions, for subject matters. And here is how it's going to be uh, extended, how the prompt is going to be extended. And finally, let's go to uh, the run method. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the only change that, we, that, that there is in the tool is that now we have uh, this enhanced prompt uh, that uh, we are using in order to send uh, the message to the OpenAI API. Uh, so after creating your tool, uh, then uh, you could submit uh, a PR. We're going to uh, review this PR and merge it. And we're going to, uh, we're going to publish uh, your tool. And then what you can do is let's take a look at the script again. Uh, let's go to the trader repository. And here, if you remember, we have this uh, configuration. We have the Mac tool. 
Here we have an environment variable. It's called MECTOOL, as you can see. Um, and here the value specifies which tool we are going to use. So if you open the script, here are the environment vari variables. You can basically put that wherever you want. You could even put that on top of the script. It doesn't matter. So let's export the value of the Mac tool. Let's change it. And let's use the subject matter expert one. Let me go to main. Let's go to the tools. Let's go to the subject matter expert request. And here we'll, we will copy, uh, we'll copy any of these tools. Uh, so the normal one uses GPT 3.5, and the strong one uses GPT 4. Let's copy the normal one for, for, for now. And we will paste the value uh, inside, uh, inside, inside our script. And then we let's stop the preview service first, because it's still running. And when the, when the service stops, we're going to rerun it, and it's going to pick up the new tool. Now we're running the service, and while it's starting, uh, as we, since we're running out of time, um, let me continue on the presentation and get back to it. So today, we have, we have talked about OLAS. Uh, we have discussed about uh, what an autonomous service is uh, and about the OLAS protocol, about the OLAS ecosystem. We discussed about the prediction agents hackathon and how you can participate, what the prizes are, and how you can simply participate by changes, changing either configurations or developing your own tool and submitting that. And uh, here you can see a QR code. You, you can scan it for uh, the OLAS links. And uh, it would be nice if you could also uh, participate on the survey that we have for the workshop and what you think about it. Uh, it's inside this link. Let's take a look at the service. It's started. and. Let's see the logs one last time. <coughs> so this is the request ID. Uh, while, while this is loading, uh, would you like maybe to ask any questions? So,
I, I think we're running out of time. Uh, and the MEC uh, needs some time to respond to this. Uh, so any questions on how you could create the tools or where you could uh, submit it or anything? Otherwise. All right. Thank you.